Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. What are the benefits of whey protein? I decided to go through this paper as I was surprised to see that enhancing cognitive function might be one of them. This paper used data collected by the same team for a previous study looking at the impact of resistance exercise and whey supplementation on muscle strength, mass, and physical function. So as we go through this paper, please keep in mind that this is only looking at the cognitive benefits and not considering the physical benefits that come from resistance exercise. Let's have a look at what they found. Here are the highlights from the paper. Whey protein improved executive function. However, resistance exercise did not have any significant cognitive benefits. There were also no synergistic benefits between resistance training and whey supplementation. Outcomes related to sarcopenia correlated with cognitive function at baseline. For example, metrics such as lay extension one rep max were positively correlated with global cognitive function. This makes sense because although sarcopenia and cognitive function may appear very different, they have commonality of underlying pathologies. And resistance exercise did lower inflammation, but these changes were not correlated with cognitive function. Although I've heard that exercise in general is good for the brain, I have not heard that whey protein also has a positive effect. Let's have a look at some of the background information for this paper. Aging is linked to both sarcopenia and cognitive decline. Previous studies have shown correlation between cognitive impairment and muscle loss. This may be because some of the common underlying causes, such as lower growth hormone, insulin resistance, and chronic inflammation. So potentially fighting sarcopenia may help with cognitive decline. Resistance exercise can help reduce sarcopenia which should come as no surprise. And it has shown benefits in cognitive function, specifically executive function, memory, and global cognitive function. The action of this is thought to be through increased BDNF and IGF-1 and decreased inflammation. Along with resistance exercise, older individuals are suggested to increase protein intake as a benefit for muscle mass and cognitive function. Increased protein has been reported to improve memory, reaction time, and emotional identification, which is the ability to identify what emotion you are feeling at any particular time. With the modes of action being increased insulin signaling, reduced inflammation, and increased IGF-1 and neurotransmitters. So there is existing data which links both exercise and protein intake to improved cognition. The aim of the study was to see how increased protein and resistance exercises impacted cognitive ability in older men. With a secondary aim to see if the two are synergistic and to look at some markers of inflammation and insulin sensitivity. The authors thought that both whey and resistance exercise would separately increase cognitive function and that they would decrease inflammation and they would be synergistic. What were the details of the trial? There were 36 men aged around 67. The trial was randomized, placebo controlled and lasted 12 weeks. There were four arms. Half, that is 18 participants, did the resistance exercise shown as RE and half did no exercise shown as NE. Then in each group, half had the whey protein and half had a carbohydrate placebo. So in the end, there were four groups of nine each, exercise and protein, no exercise and protein, exercise and placebo, and no exercise and placebo. The whey protein intervention was 25 grams twice a day on top of their normal diet. They calculated that this increased the total protein in the pro group from one to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight with about three grams of leucine. The participants took part in a battery of cognitive tests, looking at functions such as reaction time, spatial working memory, multitasking, etc., at baseline six weeks and 12 weeks. This table is showing the control group and the protein group, irrespective of whether they exercised or not, and comparing the baseline with the 12 weeks results. The paper contains other results which showed no significance 
and I have not included them here, the one significant result was for executive function. The values here are z-scores. Some of the tests shown in the previous slide had multiple results. For example, the multitasking test included reaction time and number of incorrect responses. Executive function is an average of five of these scores from the multitasking and spatial working memory tests. Global cognitive function also tended towards significance. Resistance exercise on its own did not improve any of the cognitive scores, but did decrease one in the multitasking test. This is the incongruency cost. I could not find a definitive explanation for what this is, but I think it is the extra delay caused when presented with incongruent information. For example, when the word red is written in blue letters and the participant needs to select based on the letter colors, not the meaning of the word. The authors say that there is conflicting information on whether resistance exercises help cognitive ability or not. They speculate that this may be due to the intensity of the exercise with higher intensity, over 80% of one rep max, having less benefit for cognition than mild intensity, 70% of one rep max or below. In this study, the exercises of 80% of one rep max were used. One other factor that might be at play is that the higher intensity exercise led to reduced physical activity outside the exercise where reduced physical activity has been linked to cognitive decline. Resistance exercise across both nutrition groups did lower markers of chronic inflammation, particularly interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha. These graphs are showing correlations between physiological parameters and cognitive function. These four were at baseline, showing physical and cognitive functions are correlated here, SPPB is short for short physical performance battery, and 6MWT is the six minute walk test. And the last one shows the change of episodic memory with changes in skeletal muscle index. Interestingly, there were no other correlations between other changes in biomarkers and cognitive test scores. In the declaration of interest, the authors say that they received the whey protein for free from the supplier, Agroper. Always good to look for financial incentives, but given how commoditized and relatively inexpensive whey is, it does not seem like an issue to me. I would like to reiterate what I said at the beginning, which is that this is only looking at cognitive function. The sister publication, which looked at muscle strength and function, had a positive result, and resistance training is a great way to fight sarcopenia. They did not see any synergies between resistance training and whey protein, but this analysis was underpowered, and so there may not be much that we can draw from this. It's interesting that the results did not match what the authors were originally expecting, which to me is great and shows how science is meant to work. For me, this study supports the importance of a holistic approach to health and how maintaining the brain and body are connected. I will be continuing with my resistance exercise and with my whey protein supplementation. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all well. <music>